And just like that, we're back. It's News from Section 400. Matt, Jack, and Brian bringing you along for this uninterrupted sports conversation podcast. Brian's obviously fired up. The Mets just clinched for the first time in a while. Maybe just a year off, but it's fun to say a while. Brian's having a couple drinks for it. Salute to that. I hate to see it. Jack's back. Know he's been in and out. Uh, trying to get the Jaguars on the right ship there. Uh, doesn't <laughs> seem like they're back on the ship, but uh, we'll yeah. get his thoughts in just a second here. But uh, before we jump into all the stuff that – just was the sports world this past weekend. Jack, I know you're doing a little bit of traveling. Why don't you talk about what you're up to this past weekend? Yeah, I don't know if anybody can hear it or not, but I'm a little bit under the weather. Traveling to Boston this weekend for work. It was a good time, good work trip, uh, but I definitely came down with something on the way back. So I'm, uh, I'm resting up. I talked to HR. They said we don't get PTO. We don't get sick days here at Views from Section 400. So – I'm here. I'm here for the pod. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for Brian's Mets. Uh, my teams we'll get to later. But, uh, yeah, tough, tough weekend. Tough weekend for me. I think At least you, you got to distract it with uh, all the travel. I think you caught that Trevor Lawrence bug. Whatever he's got, pass it on to you. At least I know how to throw. <laughs> is, that a, is that a shot at my quarterback? <laughs> yeah, whoa. No, no, that's a shot at Trevor. I'm, I'm so sick of watching some of these routine throws, man. Uh, yeah, anyway, Jack, great to have you back. Obviously, wish it could be under some better circumstances for you. But, Brian, um, yeah, <laughs> welcome to you too, my friend. You look pretty giddy tonight. Yeah, I was traveling too this weekend. I uh, didn't get to watch much football, but I did get to watch my New York Mets. And those New York Mets are in the postseason, the fourth team ever to start 0 and 5 and make it to the postseason. And you talked about 2022, they kind of fell into the playoffs that year, should have won the division, did not. This team has just felt different. They started off so bad. We were on this podcast four months ago after my wedding, and Jorge Lopez called them the worst team in fucking baseball. <laughs> now we're here, and they're in the playoffs. They were 10 games back. They had no shot. I said they were done. <laughs> they were 11 under, 10 games back. Like it was. They were 18 and a half back at one point. Uh, yeah. Sure. I'm sure if we went back and, and, and watched all the pods, we could probably find somewhere a Matt Colin 0% guarantee for the, for, the, for the mess to make the playoffs. He might have done I don't know if I 0 percent them. I don't know if I 0 percent them. But I do recall, and again, I am a man of my word, or like I'm not going to hide. I definitely said they were done and they don't have a shot. I don't know if I 0 percent them, though. Yeah, but I don't know if you did. But honestly, honestly – Honestly, I hope you didn't because the Matt zero percent guarantees are they're they're a hundred percent right now. I have been pretty lights out, but I definitely said they were done and had no shot. Uh, let's hopefully the guarantees can keep rolling there though. But obviously, Brian, you're fired up. Uh, anything else on the weekend for you? We didn't get you on any of the live shows, man. Yeah, I was uh, I was traveling, I was working, and then I was at a wedding. Shout out Matt Fest and Courtney Fest now. Friends of the program. I know Matt hates when I make fun of SCS football. And maybe I'll lay off it for a little bit. But just know you always have Matt to help you out and yell at me when I do make fun of D1 AA. Good ball, man. <laughs> yeah, how'd Villanova do against Maryland the other weekend? They covered. Uh, <laughs> and that's all hey, that matters hey, there. Hey, good but... teams win, great teams cover. And that's the bottom line. Hey, they got it done against the spread, and that's all that matters. They, look. It's a good tune-up for him. We'll call it that. But, uh, yeah, this is an FCS football show here. Congrats to the fest, though. Glad you guys had a great time. But, yeah, Brian, obviously in a huge, great mood. The Mets are back in the playoffs. But I want to pump the brakes there because it is officially Red October. And I honestly probably should be wearing some kind of red here. I'm almost supporting the Mets. But, again, like Jack said, this is a full-time job, man. We just did eight hours. Uh, at work, come home, gym, grocery shopping, and then I'm right on the pod with the boys. So I didn't have time to whip my Phillies jersey out. You'll see more of that later this week. But it's Abuse from Section 400 podcast. We're back. We're fired up. Not for long, because right after a word from SeatGeek, we're going to get into some NFL talk. The best time of the year is here. Football is back. 
And whether you're going to a game at Jordan Hare to cheer on Auburn, going to the link to watch the birds, or going up to MetLife, not JetLife, Matt, to watch the Giants probably lose, you're going to want to go to SeatGeek, the official sponsor of the Views from Section 400 podcast. New users, $20 off your first purchase by using code VIEWSFROM400 at checkout. Again, new users, $20 off your first purchase to any football game, any postseason baseball game, anything you're doing this late summer or fall. Code VIEWSFROM400 at checkout. Thank you to SeatGeek, the official sponsor of the podcast. Thanks to SeatGeek there. NFL recap. Obviously, we're a day late, but not a dollar short. Uh, we're going to jump right in to the Eagles and the Buccaneers. Some call it a scheduled loss. I obviously have to address it. I come on the pod day after and talk about my team, unlike Jack, who's been MIA for the last three weeks. But I come in, face the music <laughs> right away, and it's Eagles 16 and the Buccaneers 33. Now, there's a lot to discuss, a lot to go over, but I'm not going to start jamming panic buttons. I'm not going to start flipping out and saying sell the team and fire everybody. Although I do have some issues with the head coach, and we'll get into that in a second. But we'll go through three things because I don't want to turn this into a 25-minute rant session. So there's three main things that I have wrong with the Eagles right now. And I'll rank (laughs) them. Third being, I guess, not as bad. And number one being the number one, like, holy shit, they have problems. But Number three, and everybody deals with it, and I'm not trying to make an excuse, but it is a factor, and that's going to be the injuries. No A.J. Brown, no Devonta Smith. Your offensive line's banged up. There's some pieces there in the secondary that that were a little jammed up yesterday. So the injuries are glaring. These are guys, you know, A.J. Brown, high, one of the highest paid guys. Devonta Smith just got paid a shit ton of money. Both your top wideouts out, that doesn't help. Granted, there's other pieces there that could have done some things. Saquon Barkley, uh, Dallas Goddard, um, Jahan Dotsy, just what was a fourth round pick for? He's clearly showing to not be uh, a main, main guy. But there's other things there that could have done. And the quarterback, Jalen Hurts, $50 million guy a year. You'd think he'd be able to do something a little bit better, better decision making. We'll get into him in a second. But that's number three. Number two, and I'm conflicted on one or the other here. But I think I'm going to lean to being Jalen Hurts as the quarterback. Uh, there's a serious turnover issue. There's a just serious lack of discipline. The good plays, the bad play, like the bad plays seem to be way worse than the good plays. I mean, there's no pocket awareness you heard Brady talk about yesterday. The turnovers are like, it's one thing to be a turnover guy, but his turnovers are like next level, like, detrimental to the team. I mean, red zone turnovers, I, you might even lead the league in turnovers, but it is just so, so bad. You, you just – it's things that can't happen at the professional level, and Jalen Hurts is doing it on a week-to-week basis. It needs to get cleaned up, and it needs to get better. Like, I, I know they're going into the bye. Coming out of the bye, like, that all needs to be fixed. It might just be who he is, but the turnover issues are a massive – massive problem for him and the entirety of the team. So that's number two. And number one is going to be the coaching staff highlighted by Nick Sirianni. Uh, as Jack's on, on the hot seat, fire Doug Peterson train, I'm one foot on the door and the conductor's screaming all aboard because Nick Sirianni might need to be fired as a head coach because I think there's serious disconnect with the entire team, the players. I don't think they're playing for the guy. I don't know if he needs to be coaching, calling the plays, if Kellen Moore needs to be doing something better. But Kellen Moore, obviously, you guys were, tried to paint that picture before the season started. I didn't want to hear it. And now, unfortunately, I have to hear it because he is not the guy that's going to take this team forward. They've regressed every year since the Super Bowl. So Nick, Nick Sirianni doesn't seem to have a grasp on this team, doesn't seem to really have any kind of mojo going for him. Remember when he came in the league, he had the swag, he had the juice. He had the team playing behind him, and he was like that new up-and-coming young coach that everybody falls in love with, and he's kind of lost everything. Uh, I, I understand it's highlighted by injuries, but, yeah, a lot to go over, obviously, but those are my three issues with the Eagles right now. I don't know that they're going to go and make a firing midseason. I don't think that they can, but Nick Sirianni, Jalen Hurts, 
two biggest glaring issues right now, followed number three coming in, is the injuries, which everybody has to deal with. So there's only so much to say there. But Brian, Jack, I don't know who wants to digest and try and try and uh, make some sense of everything I just went on. I tried to not make it too too big of a rant, but your guys' thoughts on what you saw Sunday down in Tampa. Yeah, well, it sounds like you're dealing with an NFC East team that has a bad head coach with receivers that are pretty mediocre and Saquon Barkley in the backfield and a quarterback that may not be good with Saquon Barkley and those mediocre receivers there. I wouldn't go as far as saying that because the the receiver right now, maybe yesterday, sure, <laughs> but maybe yesterday, sure. But to, to I hope you're not including A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith in that because no. they're far better than anybody that the Giants have had in the last almost 10 years. No, Br- Matt, the point that Brian is trying to make, it, and I don't get it, it's like the weird fetish or something. He just <laughs> loves comparing his Daniel Jones <laughs> to my Trevor Lawrence, to your Jalen Hurts. Like, dude, you don't have Jalen Hurts. You don't have Trevor Lawrence. You're stuck with Danny Dimes. All right. Maybe both of your quarterbacks are just Daniel Jones in a different jersey. Face the music, Brian. I think me and Matt are happier with our quarterbacks than you are with yours. Well, I don't know if you are with yours, and it sounds like Matt isn't as happy if he doesn't have his elite receivers to help out his quarterback. That might not be so good. We're going through a tough time right now. All right. Both Trevor and Jalen are going through a tough time right now. Um, but we've seen the flashes from them. I don't know what I've seen from I don't know what flash I've seen from Daniel Jones outside of that 80 yard touchdown scramble he had until he tripped himself. Yeah, that might be the highlight of his career. It is. It is the highlight of his career. <laughs> he had a playoff touchdown pass. That's probably the highlight of his career. One. All right. <laughs> anyway, Matt, I just want to say to that, like, you know, the key injuries, that's the thing. Everybody is banged up. Everybody has injuries. But, you know, when you have multiple to one position group, it really hurts. I mean, you guys traded for Jahan Dotson not too long ago. Um, and like you said, you gave him a fourth-round pick for him. You're not expecting the guy to come in and be, you know, a superstar. And when number one and number two go down and you're expecting this dude to now jump up and be the superstar, it's, it's just not going to happen like that. Uh, we're seeing the same thing happen in L.A. with Cub and, and Puka Nakua hurt. You know, they have guys like Tutu Atwell and Demarcus Robinson stepping up. They're not stars, but, you know, everybody's got to do their best to to contribute. So I'll give Hurts a little bit of a leeway there um, as far as, like, the production goes. But the turnover problem is a real problem. It, it's honestly a problem for all of these quarterbacks. I'm seeing terrible pocket presence and awareness and bad decisions, not being able to read defenses. I mean, this is stuff that, you know, we have to listen to Brady talk about on the, on the, uh, on the cast the whole time. But – him and him and Manning and Romo, they just love ripping into these new newer quarterbacks who just can't seem to get it right. But uh, they're absolutely correct because or, or Brady's correct because the pocket awareness by specifically Jalen Hurts was so poor yesterday. I know we love to throw these outlandish, or at least I do, of saying like I feel like I could have better pocket awareness. Of course I can't, but that's how bad it was. From Jalen Hurts yesterday is like it's just like, dude, I feel like I could do better. Like, what? Like, how do you have no awareness of where these guys are? The one he dives out of the way of a defender and then lackadaisically rolls to the left. Like, dude, you just escaped that defender. You don't think he's coming back at you? Like, it it makes no sense to me. I, I don't understand it. Um, and then just just the kind of nonchalant head down whoa what was me interview after the game of just like oh, I gotta play better it falls on me I gotta play better like that can only get you so far that blaming yourself and saying you gotta play better while week in and week out not playing better it, it's gonna blow up quick dude and, and Jalen I love you man but like you gotta you gotta actually start walking the walk here and playing better yeah there's no doubt about it I mean it's good to see I mean, I'm I'm a fan of when guys take accountability, put it on their own shoulders. But you're right. You you can only do it do every for, week. Yeah, you can only do it for so long before you, you start actually, so long. you know, improving. The uh, same thing happens has been happening with Trevor week in and week out. He's like, yeah, you know, just didn't execute. Got to go back, watch the tape, be better next week. Okay, we'll be better next week. Right. Do it. I dare you. Be better. I love the accountability, but there at the t- you actually have to then get better or play better. It can't just be you know. Blaming yourself, taking responsibility, and and you know losing every week. Yeah, 
I, th I think he chose the wrong profession because that man loves to just come up with these wisdom like sayings and quotes and <laughs> just they don't they it's don't cool you when you're winning and it. playing at MVP level. When you're playing like a schmuck, you just sound like a jackass. That's a good way to put it. But that's all I got. Look, two and two going into the into the bye. Again, concerned about the quarterback, concerned about the head coach and the play calling, the coaching staff in general. The injuries are the band-aid that's leaving me with hope. And we saw what they did week one against the Packers. The, the offense can score. The defense is kind of getting better. I don't you know, because then after yesterday, it wasn't. But we know what the offense can do when, when they're at full strength. Let's see what they look like after the bye. And I'll leave it at that. And I guess we can jump into some Jags Texans where a little more trouble in paradise down there in Jacksonville. Yeah, Matt, Matt's calling me out saying that I am away from the pod, not speaking on the team. To anybody who missed, uh, I believe it was last Wednesday's pod or last Thursday's, whenever it comes out, uh, that's when I went on my big-ass Jags rant uh, after the week three loss, after watching the worst first half of football I've ever seen out of the Jacksonville Jaguars in Buffalo. Uh, so I'm going to spare everybody the entire rant again. But what I will say is this is the exact same thing that we've seen through the first three weeks. Like that, that game was so incredibly parallel to week one against Miami. I mean, we're up, it's late in the game. And what do we do? We jag it. We just, we, we blow the game. I mean, it's, I'm Brian, my mental health, is down here after watching Auburn and the Jaguars just go into fourth quarters with leads and blow them consistently. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it, it's just you you have to you have to finish games, um, Trevor. You need to make the routine throws. It's just you know you don't do the simple things right. You're not winning football games. I'm so sick of Doug Peterson in the press conference afterwards. He knows he's he knows he's toast. He does, and it's it's. It's really tough to see. I mean, maybe we keep them around a few more weeks, you know, whatever. We lose a couple more games. I mean, this this week four loss against the Texans, that was it. Like, that was it. If, if, if we win that game, um, you know, you could turn the season around getting, you know, starting your divisional uh, your divisional matchups 1-0. You know, you, you go you go sweep the your, your, your division, you can still make the playoffs, you know. Um, but now that we lost that, there's just zero shot. I didn't have a whole lot of faith going into the game. But now that that's done and we're 0 4, I'm ready for the number one overall pick again. Yeah, next time they Doug play the Peterson Texans. got into it with the reporter a little bit at the end of the game there, too. It sounds like even the uh, the home media is turning on the guy now, which is never good. That's like tell telltale sign of, of your one foot out the door. Yeah. It's hard to get the Jacksonville media mad at you, too. That's what I'm saying. We're, like, we're living in Florida, dude. We're happy. We're good people. The only time we're not happy is when we pay a quarterback $50 million and he can't complete a 10-yard pass down the field to a wide-open receiver. Yeah, probably not. But the best. at least, at least also, you have a ceiling with Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, we do have a ceiling with Trevor the Lawrence. The Giants and, did that. <laughs> what do they have? Exactly. But I will say one last thing on the Jags. If I have to watch – Another touchdown pass. Doink off of one of my receivers' face masks. I won't watch the next week of football. I'll do. I'm, I'm pulling a Brian right now. If if in week five I have to watch Christian Kirk or BTJ, I, Brian Thomas hasn't been doing it, but like Christian Kirk, if I have to watch him or Gabe Davis take a ball to the face and it bounces off. In the end zone, I will not watch football the next week. I'm so sick of this. You're an NFL receiver. Get your hands up and catch the fucking football. Yeah, Christian Kirk's surprising, but we, Brian and I tried to warn you about Gabe Davis, man. We did. We tried. <laughs> I, well, I, I called him out. He, he, he was hurt this past week. Um, I don't know why I can't think of who it was. Maybe it was our backup tight end that we have to play because Brenton Evan Strange. Evans hurt Brenton Strange. I think that's who it was. Brenton Strange, your, uh, your AFC South tight end, fantasy tight end. <laughs> Yeah, hey, well, drafted him for a reason. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the only thing I have on this is Jack. Next time the Texans play the Jags, please remind me to bet on the Texans. The Jags have lost, they've won twice in the last 13 times they've played Houston. Yeah, I know. 
It's almost as bad. It's getting like Giants Cowboys level. I'm pretty sure those two wins were against Davis Mills. <laughs> That's not great. They had to have been. Had to have been. That's really tough. Also, your guy Josh Hines Allen is hurt now. He's been uh he's been a tough one. He he's not been playing great this year and now he's hurt on top of it. You know, the the, the D line, which I was super excited about. That's D line in football. No moss. <laughs> yeah, so do we are, are you prepared? Oh and four. The line's about to play tonight. Are you are you ready to admit the mistake of Aiden Hutchinson? Ooh. Tyler Huntley just got popped. That's great. Don't change the subject here. <laughs> yeah. Let's stay on track. Um, it's a two-parter. One would be for the first question. But two, I, I don't know that you necessarily answered the is the season over. Aspect. The season's over. The season's so over, it, yeah. No, after so losing. If the season's over, that means Trayvon Walker's a bust. I, I, I'm not sure how you're correlating those two things, but what I am saying is the season is over. Okay. Now that we're 0-4, we just lost our first divisional game to the Texans, who are, you know, very, very, very likely going to win the division. Um, yeah, it's over. Season's over. So I'll answer the question for you. Sounds like Don't put no, words in my mouth. You're not Don't, don't you ready. dare. Don't you dare you're put not, words in my mouth. I'll, I'll, well, I, I have to speculate because you refuse to answer the question. So – I would say, based on your response, very political. I'm pleading the fifth. I'm pleading the fifth. Politician esque, ignoring the question and going <clears throat> elsewhere with it. Uh, I will say, no, you're not ready to admit it, but you're sure, surely thinking about it. And it's on your mind as the weeks go on and on of Aiden Hutch- Hutchinson looking all pro and Trayvon Walker looking all no. Dude had, dude had 10 sacks last year. I'm not worried. Brian, thoughts? I'm just staring at the Jaguars schedule to try to give Jack – listen, Trayvon Walker's a bust, but I'm just staring <laughs> at the schedule trying to give Jack a uh, a beacon of hope here. Don't and bother. I'm, I'm looking at this game on November 3rd at 8.20 p.m. When, when, is, when is Auburn's opening basketball game? Like, that's what's going to give me hope, Brian. <laughs> November 4th. Probably right around November 3rd. <laughs> um. I am interested. I really want to know, and I hope I hope the Eagles are in a better spot than they are right now, just for content's sake. We have the Jaguars traveling to Lincoln Financial Field on November 3rd to take on the Eagles. This might be a spot where the loser fires their head coach. Very well could be. Yeah. I think the I, Eagles will get better though when they get their key guys back, right? Like the Jags are not playing injured. I'm sure they might have injuries here, but like they got the quarterback. The offensive line's there. I know it might not be good. Etienne's there. Brian Thomas Jr., Christian Kirk. Like, all their pieces are there. There's there's no, like, guy waiting in the woodworks that's, like, coming back to save them. Like, at least I can look at A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith and say, hey, at least we have these guys who can come back who we go from fielding practice squad guys to we have two all pros coming back. Well, I don't know how much faith you have in Evan Ingram, but that's one guy we've been missing all season. Like, there's just a massive fall-off between the two guys that were waiting to come back and Evan Ingram. Well, is there? I mean, Evan Ingram led tight ends in receptions last year. He was clearly a very big focal point of our offense. A.J. Brown wins you games. Has Evan Ingram win you games? He has. He has won the Jackson games. But not. I'm not going to sit here and tell you he's as impactful as A.J. Brown. I won't say that. But I will say that he's probably better than you guys. He's more impactful to the Jaguars than you yeah. guys are giving him credit for. That, that's what I was going to come back with. I think, like, if you're just comparing the players, obviously Brown and Smith are better. But just relative to the team success, I will give Jack a little bit of leeway with Evan Ingram there. Yeah, but you're right, Matt. He's the only one that, you know, we're sort of missing and, and waiting to come back. And, no, he's not going to be inserted on offense and we're, you know, flipping a switch just like that. He's, right. he's not that good. I, I think, I the think best, that's the bottom line there. The best case um, scenario for content's sake here. And, Jack, you called the season over, so I'm not really feeling sorry about saying this. Is the Jaguars go into that game in Philly 0-8? 
and Doug Peterson somehow steals a job and gets his revenge on the Philadelphia Eagles who are like hovering around 500. I, Brian, I, you know what? I would hate that if the Jags just went winless until that game. But at the same time, for content's sake, you're right. That would be hilarious because let's put it this way. If the Jags are 0-8, I don't think Doug Peterson's still our coach going into that game. Yeah. Um, and then on top of that, if the Jags are 0-8 and, and we go into the link and beat the Eagles on Sunday Night Football, yeah, Nick's probably gone too. Yeah. I'm already fully prepared for that to happen. <laughs> I'm still, yeah, I'm still trying to. After to, what I've seen from the Eagles so far, I'm fully prepared for it's. It's just going to be nonsense, dude. They're going to let like Trevor Lawrence throw for 400 yards. They're going to let. It's, it, they're not going to cover Gabe Davis. He's going to be like prime Deshaun Jackson. It's just, it's. I'm already prepared for that. And again, like you said, to top it all off, content wise. It's just so on brand for the Eagles to drop that game at home on Sunday night. So I'm already fully prepared for that, just not to go the way that I need it to go. I might still try to come up to Philly for that game. You definitely should. I should. I'm going to try to. 100% should. Um, but that's, that's we step on the line, man. Let's get through the bye week and through the upcoming games before we jump all the way down. The, uh, to, to that week. But let's keep it moving here. We hit the Eagles. We hit the Jags. Giants lost on Thursday, so we don't really need to jump into that. Uh, but the Bengals and the Panthers, that game happened. Is Joe Burrow back? I'm not going to say that. They beat the lousy Panthers. But I will say the Panthers look better with Andy Dalton. And uh, it sounds like Bryce Young is not going to play another snap as a Carolina Panther. I think they should trade him sooner rather than later. Bryce Young might not play another snap as an NFL starting quarterback. He'll get time. another shot elsewhere. I, I'm I'm still not completely out on the fact that he could start for the Panthers in a year or two. You know what I mean? Or at least, you know, if Dalton gets hurt. But look, I'm pretty out on it. Strictly because of the difference. The offense, like, they were well, barely putting up 10 points. Yeah, They've had 24-plus in back-to-back weeks. Well, well that's, that's the thing. Is, points that's that's the last thing. week. Bryce but Young that, will never see another snap in the NFL. Okay. But that's like, the thing is, like, like you're throwing on Bryce Young. You're throwing Bryce in, you know, trial by fire. He, you know, he never had time to sit behind anybody, you know, watch, learn, develop. Um, and we've seen it go both ways. Some guys like Stroud can come in and just light the world on fire. Jaden Daniels. Other guys, you got to sit, you got to develop, and then you come out and you look way better. Like, I feel like that's what we've seen with Sam Darnold, for an example. Um, and he might. It's just I don't think it's going to be the other Panthers. It's just I can understand that. I can understand. But I mean, like we're also. I think we gotta, you know, give Andy Dalton some some credit here. I mean, this was this is a veteran quarterback who commanded the Bengals for like a decade, um, and did well. I mean, I'm not going to call him, you know, a Tom Brady, a Peyton Manning, or anything like that. But he was he was Tony Romo esque. You know, he was a very serviceable, very serviceable quarterback, and now he's you know got maybe a better cast of characters than he ever had in uh, Cincinnati. And he's doing well. You got to give him credit. I mean, look, this is what happens with experience. Like this is what a veteran quarterback can get you. And, you know, just to bolster this point a little bit more, your guy, Joe Flacco, he's back for Indy winning football games. Well, I'm not going to let you disrespect fantasy legend, Jeremy Hill. And maybe future Hall of Famer AJ Green like that. I was gonna I, say, don't disrespect my guy AJ Green like that. AJ Green's not a Hall of Famer. And Rutgers, don't, disres- don't disrespect be. my guy. No shot. DJ no shot. Who's With the injury, no way. Yeah, and Rutgers legend Muhammad Sanu. They, they had a good squad back in the day. Sanu. No. I, yeah, okay. The only one. The only one I'll give you is AJ Green. The other one, maybe Jeremy Hill. Jeremy Hill won me a fantasy championship. He was a running yeah. back. Yeah, that helps. Who does? I mean, they got Chubba Hubbard back there now. I'd say Jeremy Hill over Chubba Hubbard. I probably would too, but that's like that's we're talking about quarterbacks. Like we're talking about weapons. You know, like excuse me, we're talking about like receivers and tight ends, people you're throwing the football to. I understand you throw some dump offs and some screens to running backs, but that's not what we're talking about here. I'm talking about the receivers. Like AJ Green, sure, I'll give you that when he was in his prime. For a few years, yeah, but he's not a Hall of Famer. He didn't have a, a ten-year career doing that stuff. He was, he, he had a good career. He was hurt for what the last five years of his career. Played like well, yeah, a couple of games here and there. 
that's why we don't remember him well. But he was down there and with the Bengals for like seven, eight years, just putting up a thousand yards back and forth every year. He definitely yeah, was. But we're gonna have to leave, let's this. leave the past in the past. Two quick questions to end this game that we already have already spent way too much time on. Uh, Jack, I think we've already got your answer. But Brian, Bryce Young, another snap for the Panthers, yes or no? I think he gets one more shot with the Panthers this year, and then his career's done. And then his career is over. Jack, you think he gets – Yeah, I think – I think. I mean, he's he's going to come in if Dalton gets hurt. And even if Dalton doesn't get hurt, there's no chance that these Panthers are a playoff team. So come the last two, three, four weeks of the season, I'm sure we get Bryce Young in there for a game or two as a, an audition or um, if, if they see if they want to keep him or if they're going to trade him in the offseason. Maybe they try and, you know, make him look good at the end of the year to – Set him up with some trade bait in the offseason. But uh, this one, this final question, Jack, we can get your thoughts on it, but uh, mainly pertains to Brian. Uh, Bengals pick up the first game, uh, win of the year, one and three. Brian's bold prediction, Bengals Super Bowl. Just an update on that take. Oh, I'm all the way back on the train. Joe Burrow, last two games, 278 yards a game and five touchdowns. If they can get by the Panthers, not the Panthers, if they can get by the Ravens in this next upcoming week, which is going to be a tough game, but it is at home. They do have the Giants and the Browns next on the schedule. So I think they're either going to be three and four or four and three after that. So I'm, I'm all the way back in on Cincinnati. All the way back in on Cincy. Interesting stuff there. They do get the win, and Brian is back on board of the Bengals Super Bowl bandwagon. <laughs> Tough uphill battle to go there. But we move on to the battle of the NFC South, the Saints. Dropping two in, two in a row after looking like the best team in football. The Falcons are starting to play like the team we all expected them to be. Young Ho Ku with a 58-yard field goal to win the game and right the ship and salvage this season because going one and four or what would they have been? One and three mm-hmm. now to two and two. Falcons looking like the team of destiny in that division. Yeah, I don't know what the Saints are doing. Taysom Hill, two rushing touchdowns. By the way, he's second all time in rushing touchdowns by a tight end. That's why that's is he wild. listed as a tight end? <laughs> that's, that's another thing I really don't know. But he's going to finish as the leader in rushing touchdowns by a tight end. So know that for future trivia questions. But yeah, the Saints. <laughs> the Saints are such a weird team. I, I don't understand yeah. what they're doing. They have always been a weird team. Ever ever since Sean Payton and Drew Brees got out of town, they've been a weird team. Yeah, again, two and zero start, beating some solid teams in the like. Well, I guess the Panthers weren't that solid, but beating the Cowboys and and they were doing it in blowout fashion. They almost looked like they weren't going to be stopped. Alvin Kamara turning back the clock, but again, Kamara still looked good, had a great game, and they just didn't get it done. Had every chance. I mean, look, a fifty-eight yard field goal. What the time expiring uh, is what 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 lost them the game there. So uh, I think the Saints will be fine, but I think the Falcons are are as advertised, and uh, you know might start kicking it into gear here with uh, Kirk Cousins at the helm. Yeah, they they needed some time to get better. You know, a lot of new pieces, offense and defense. Uh, coach, all that good stuff. You know, you sometimes you need a game or two, uh, a few weeks into the season to really get that cohesion, and they're they're starting to roll. Yeah, I think it might be time for us as a podcast to to come to the conclusion that Kyle Pitts just might not be good. He's ass. Zero, a donut in this game. It, it just yeah, I, I, we thought maybe with Kirk coming in, he would become something, but yeah, he's he looks like he might just suck. Uh, well, that's the thing, dude. Is like. When you're only getting three targets in a game and you don't catch any of them, I mean, like, you're not earning targets. Like, three targets is not enough for Kyle Pitts. <clears throat> if you look at their team on paper, it should go Drake London, Kyle Pitts, as far as, you know, receiving options go. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Bijan should be in there too. But, uh, you know, three three targets for your number two option is simply just not enough. Uh so he's clearly not the number two option. He's not separating. He's not earning targets. No, he's he's bad. Sounds like Darnell Moody's taken all the all the time. He he looks like he has like a very good chemistry with Kirk Cousins, especially on some deep balls. 
Kirk always loves those like number two, three receivers for some reason. It just always does. He was the Vikings guy he loved. Jordan Addison. Yeah, there was Addison, and then there was one more he liked too. But yeah, KJ Osborne. KJ Osborne. Yeah, like made KJ Osborne a decent fantasy player. He just likes his other guys, which makes you think he would like Pitts too. But Brian, real quick, was your team's that down bad that you had to start KJ Osborne and actually thought he was a reliable fantasy option? He had he had decent weeks. Like if you needed a waiver wire fill in, he was he was always a guy around. I'd have to double check that. Um, well, last year, last year especially when uh, when Jefferson was hurt for like the back half of the season, KJ Osborne was like a plug in kind of player. He up. Gotcha. I won't say he turned up, but he was like he was like some weeks you could start him. He would always be good for a touchdown, like one in every three weeks, and you just have to pick the right week. Dangerous. Game. All right. Well, <clears throat> before we move on, both teams two and two. Are we lean in Falcons here? I don't I still think the Saints got a shot. I mean the Saints had every every right to win that game. They lost the 58 yard Hail Mary field goal from Young Low Co. I mean, I, I think the Saints are still, especially in the return game to New Orleans, Saints definitely could win that game. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the Bucks look like the best team in this division. And then maybe the Falcons. I don't know. I think the Saints are shooting for third, honestly. Yeah, I I mean, I was definitely stunned with the way that they played the first two games of the season, the Saints, uh, just how dominant they were. But week three and four, I mean, you see them come back down to earth, which is sort of what we expected them to do the whole time. I don't know. Just because of the, I guess, like the ceiling that I saw in weeks one and two, I guess I'm still I'm – a, I'm a little bit more optimistic about this team than I was coming into the season. But if you're going to hold a, a gun to my head and make me choose, I'm going with – Kirk Cousins and the Falcons. I'm not – you can't get me to choose Derek Carr. Fair enough. Rams 18, Bears 24. Are we all in on Caleb Williams and the Chicago Bears? Two and two. Two and two. Back to 500. I would say no for me. If they're able to run the football, which they were in this game, I don't know if that's an indictment on the Rams or if they are actually figured that out. But if they can do that, then sure, they might be able to make something happen. I'm going to go with it. It was an indictment on the Rams. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I, I think DeAndre Swift is not good, personally. <laughs> and that offensive line isn't good either. But it worked in this one. Um, you know, I, I know I know the defensive line for the Rams isn't great. They had to spend two high-end, you know, draft picks on it to replace guys like Aaron Donald uh, this year. So, that's another unit, you know, like we're talking about the Falcons, that probably needs to come into their own and develop a little bit more. Uh, I'm not in on the Bears, man. You know I love their defense, but their offense, I'm, I'm not in on yet. They have a bad O-line. I, they don't have a run game, even though that was different in this one. They don't have a run game. They don't have a good O-line, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not at the point where I can trust Caleb Williams with anything yet. I agree. There we go. Well, speaking of, we're talking to uh, Bears, we'll hit the Vikings and the Packers, which is the other NFC North uh, teams. And the Vikings, who everybody, I think, had predicted to finish last in this division, are 4-0. And Sam Darnold threw three more touchdowns. Even though Jordan Love came back and, and played pretty lights out, Sam Dar- Darnold, you know, out them. I think it's time to – well, I think it's time to have two discussions. The first being – Sam Darnold might actually win this. I know we were kind of joking about it the first couple of weeks, but he's putting himself in a position where he should be a favorite to win the MVP award. We're, we're a quarter of the way through the year, and he's still putting up these numbers. He He's definitely the favorite to win the MVP right now. I'd be shocked if you can name me someone, and I'm like, oh, yeah, definitely. But like, Sam Darnold's 4-0. He's a quarterback of a 4-0 team that everybody expected to be asked. And to Matt's point, yeah, I think everybody had him pegged as the, the last place team in this NFC North. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. And then my second discussion I want to bring up here, which may be a little more out of left field. Jordan Love is 0-2 as the starter in Green Bay. Malik Willis was 2-0. Quarterback controversy. I, they looked like a different team with Malik Willis. LaFleur was able to kind of run the ball like Shanahan with those interesting run plays, and Malik Willis flourished. Look, 
Jordan Love still put up 300 yards. I think he still threw, what, two or three touchdowns. Yeah, but it was a Might Dak have. Prescott kind of garbage time, try to bring your team back. It, it wasn't a true 300 yards. It was, I mean, 300 yards, 300 yards. They were down, what, 31 to three? It, it was like, yeah, let me Lost by two. Yeah, but the, it was a touchdown with like 20 seconds left, and then they had to get the onside, and they didn't. Hey, if they got that onside, they go steal that game. It yeah, really is a lot closer than you're making it. I don't, know. I don't think the Vikings were ever too worried. Probably not, but I, I, I still think you can't just, like, discard 300 yards and three TDs regardless of if you scored them with five seconds left or 15, sec- 15 well, minutes left in the first quarter. It depends on your goalpost. Like, would you say Dak Prescott played well against the Ravens? It's like the same kind of That's game. That's why, sure. I mean, yeah, that's the thing. I, I would say no, but I mean, it's it's kind oh. of tough. It's a tough question, dude. I mean, when when they go down, like what was it, twenty one nothing, like within a blink of an eye, and then like the whole game, you're just like fighting your way back, and you, you know you scrap it back. I mean, he he played a good second half, but like you know the defense wasn't as, I guess. Engaged, you could say. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll give it to you. It was, it was a good game. But it was all, it, I don't know. It just, I like Malik. I, I know what you're saying, and I'll leave you at this. Brian, I asked you last week, Jack, we didn't have you, so the question will be more for you. We see the Vikings get it done again. What is this team ceiling? I think Brian had him as NFC championship losers. Brian, has that changed? Jack, what's your ceiling for the Vikings? Ceiling, I mean, I'm watching everything around all the teams in the NFL right now, analyzing all the holes that they have. Like, there's holes in every team. This team, this team's ceiling is a Super Bowl loss. And the reason I say that is because if they meet the Chiefs in the in the Super Bowl, which is going to happen eventually, the Chiefs are going to they're going to win. I mean, I don't, I know, I'm getting way off topic here, but. You want to talk about the Chiefs for a second? Being four and zero when they could very, very easily be zero and four if they weren't, you know, getting sucked off by the refs. We'll get to them. All right. <laughs> I I still, even though there's holes all throughout the NFC, I just think like it's either the Niners or the Eagles or one of these teams that's supposed to be elite. The Lions is gonna get to the point where they're gonna play maybe the Vikings in that championship game and I just can't can't say confidently Sam Darnold and the Vikings will win that game. Yeah, so you want to know you want to what's funny that, that this team kind of reminds me of uh you know just any any team that's been out there that nobody wants to give a shit about, no one believes in at all and then here we are come playoff time, come NFC championship and they win and we're all just like did this really just happen? You know what I mean? Yeah, I just can't see. Do any of those teams ever get all the way to the Super Bowl, though? I can't see. I can't see, like, random. The, the Eagles in 17? <laughs> yeah, I guess. Maybe. Super Bowl champs, baby. Um, I, I, the Vikings seem to have that special kind of magic going right now where you just, like, need that little buzz around your team and that little spark of magic. And just it just has that feel of where they can make a run. Now, will it eventually blow up in their face? I don't know. But they seem like they got some magic going on. And sometimes that's all you need. We saw it with the Eagles in 2017. You can call it the fluke, whatever. They had the magic. They had the magic. And through four weeks, Sam Darnold and the Vikings have the magic. I just, I, in my brain, I can't picture Sam Darnold at a Super Bowl media day as a starting quarterback answering questions about the game. Just not. nobody could for Nick Foles either. Yeah, but that was also like he came in for an injury. I don't know. Sam Darnold's going to start the whole season. It's just, it's yeah, it's a different dynamic. But they're four and zero, and four and zero is four and zero. So who knows what's going to happen? Still, some more. You know, let's see what they do against the Lions. Let's see what they do. Uh, I guess they got to play the Packers again. Maybe Jordan Love plays better in Brian's eyes. Um, but I, 
I just think the Vikings got some good magic going on right now. And the addition of Aaron Jones, I don't think that's being talked about enough either. He's He's been electric for them. I, the one thing I'll say, though, is I – Outside of that Patriots team that went all the way to the Super Bowl undefeated, I feel like every time I've seen a team start this hot, you know, 4 0, 5 0, 6 0, like they always at some point hit a roadblock and they're just never the same again. I feel like you need to have some adversity early in the season and, you know, work through that, build off of that to be hot at the right time. I feel like they're hot at the wrong time right now. No one cares if you're, if you start the season 6 0, if you finish. Eight and eleven, you know. Saw so with the Jaguars yeah. last year. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Eagles did the same thing, so uh, it's it's definitely something to think about, something to be concerned about. The Vikings head coach, I, I don't remember his name, but seems like a guy who should have this team ready to go. I, I like him a lot. I think he's a good head coach, Kevin, um, Kevin O'Connell. <laughs> yeah, solid dude, and uh, seems to be a solid coach. But we'll see what happens. It's a long season, and they only added a game. And they added a playoff team. So there's a lot of additions uh, that that these Vikings are going to have to get through. But, again, nice 4-0 start. And Sam Darnold emerging as an early MVP favorite. Uh, Steelers travel to the Colts. I had this as my lock for the Steelers. And I just I don't think we're seeing the board clearly because this in no way was a lock. Justin Fields, I mean, I, I don't know how that guy's not solidified as a, as a starting quarterback. 300 yards, three total touchdowns. Was that in garbage time too, Brian? <laughs> no. Oh, so there you go. The Steelers. Um, oh, the Steelers are a good team. Uh, I mean, Matt, you. I think you had the right read. You just couldn't have expected Anthony Richardson to get hurt and then Joe Flacco come in. If you knew Joe Flacco was starting this game, you probably would have never bet on the Steelers. No, I would have been all over the Colts. And I was going to say, Joe. Like, no. I, if yeah, I uh, yes. Exactly. Like, if I knew Joe Flacco was playing, dude, I would have had no doubt in my mind. You guys would have been like, oh, he's old, year removed from the Browns run. I would have been, no. This is Joey Nukes. This is Joe Flack Jacket, baby. He's going out there and getting it done. And he did. He did. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's you know, he doesn't start the game, comes in at halftime. He doesn't care. He's down two scores. Not that they were, but it's just Joe Flacco, and he goes in there, gets a job done. Veteran guy, um, I think what he's as old as Anthony Richardson's mom, probably. He's thirty nine. He's he's eight days younger than Anthony Richardson's mom. There you eight, go. Eight days. He could be his father. That's yeah. how unbelievable it is. Yeah, Joe Flacco has now played 23 games against the mighty Mike Tomlin Steelers defense. I'm interested how many touchdowns and interceptions you think he has against the Steel – I guess they're not the Steel Curtain anymore, but still a pretty, pretty good defense. Do you have the numbers in front of you? Man, all those all those years in Baltimore with the Browns. Uh, shit, I don't know. I want I want to say that it's – Two to one. I think he's got double the amount of touchdowns as he does interceptions. Got a guess, Matt? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I'll be fun with this and actually give you a number. I'm like Jack giving two to one out. Uh, I'll say – I'll say 22 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Brian, how many, how many games? 23. All right. 30 touchdowns. 10 picks, three to one. You should have stuck closer to your two to one. You were pretty, you were right down the middle, Jack. It was 29 touchdowns, 12 interceptions. And he's not going to get credit for the win in, uh, in this game because he didn't start. But technically, since he won, he's 12 and 11 now against the Steelers. It's pretty impressive. <laughs> I mean, Joe Flacco's a good player, but. Brian, you just said 29 and 12? 29 and 12. I went with 30 and 10. That's like way yeah, closer but... than two to one. Well, if you. St- Kind of split the middle. That's what I was saying. I'm not doing math with you right now. Either way, Joe Flacco has a winning record against Mike Tomlin, who has never had a losing record ever. Yeah. So props to Joey Flack right there, getting it done. The Colts get on the board in the win column. And is this – is Joe Flacco going to start the rest of the year? 
I mean, it was it was a hip injury to Richardson. I I think those are usually like a, a pain thing. Not I don't, I don't I, maybe he has to get surgery on his hip. I don't know, but usually that's just a pain thing. So maybe he's out for like four four or five weeks at the most. I would think if he wins, if Joe Flacco starts the rest of the year. I'm not saying Super Bowl, but the Colts have a real shot at this division with plenty of divisional games left. It's not the way I thought the cold season was going to go. Because I did it was the way you thought they were going to go. <laughs> no, I have my sleeper dark horse, but I did not think Joe Flacco was getting inserted week four. I uh, I don't know. I'm not and there yet. It just yet. makes I, so much sense now. I think their defense <laughs> took a step up this week, but they were also playing the, the Steelers offense, who's their offense isn't great. Uh, so I'm not there yet. I don't think they have the defense to to do it. I'm not going to doubt Joe Flacco after last year. Yeah, I'm not either. Um, jump into an ugly one at Jet Life. It almost deserves to be yet ripped of that name after watching this game. But the Broncos, who stayed east, 10 points. Bo Nix, 60 passing yards, take on the Jets, put up nine points. Greg Zerloin's missing kicks for the first time in who knows how long. They can't punch it in with Brees Hall from the one-yard line, what, two times in a row that was? Braylon Allen, 250-pound running back. Why was he not in the game? A lot of question marks on the play calling, on the coaching. And it goes back to me just not being bought in on Aaron Rodgers and the New York Jets. Yeah, they look bad. They lost the game to Bo Nix and where Bo Nix threw for 60 yards. I don't know how yeah. you can I do mean, that. that was horrible. That was horrible. If you're yeah. a Jeff fan, how are you still screaming and going off about Aaron Rodgers this, Aaron Rodgers that? I mean, the Jets are still the Jets here. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I I'm still I'm still even this was this was a, a fluky game. This was a fluky game. Like you're you're not gonna hold Aaron Rodgers to nine points all too often. I mean, your 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 kicker's missing kicks. Uh you know, I don't care who you're playing. You know, a ten to nine game is not normal. It's fluky. Uh, I've got, I've got faith in the Jets. I don't think the Jets are. That's that North Jersey Homer right there. I, I don't think the Jets are as doom and gloom as I guess you believe they are. But yeah, you can't drop this game. This is a game on the schedule in the preseason. You're like, all right, we're we're winning this one. This is easy. When you start losing those, it's a problem. That's the thing, though. There have been so many of those games this year by a lot of teams. A lot of teams. You look around the league and you're just like, how on earth did you actually lose this game? And that's that's one of them. Like a 10-9 to game at home against the Broncos. How, how do you lose that game? Yeah, but the difference there is like I'm more confident in the Ravens and the 49ers. And they're like the two biggest losses there than I am the Jets with those question marks around Rodgers and – I guess the defense is still good, but like Garrett Wilson hasn't had over sixty yards in the game yet. That's a problem. Yeah, that's that's weird. I mean, look, their offense is bad. Like I know they have Aaron Rodgers, they have Brees Hall, they have Garrett Wilson, but that's that's it. That's it. Yeah, and that's really not hard to take away two guys. Like it's not that unbelievable that they only scored nine points. Is it just that bad? Like with the Niners, like they lose to the Patriots. I'm like, I'm still they're the Niners. They're going to be there at the end. I don't know if the Jets are going to be there at the end. I I do I have, I've uh, I have a lot of confidence that they're going to make a move for Devontae Adams. I can see that. I might need to. Yeah, I, that would be that would be something. I'd like it for fantasy purposes, but but let's jump on to the hottest team in the NFC East, the best team in the NFC East, the Washington Commanders. The behind best quarterback Ryan... in the NFC East. What? The best quarterback in the NFC East? I don't know that I'm going that far, but I don't know. I know Jack has a little more of a vendetta against Jaden Daniels than I do. I didn't like the guy. I thought the Heisman was fluky. But, I mean, this guy is just proving me wrong week in and week out. Rookie yeah, of the year. I, I can't say anything other than that. He's, uh, he's definitely proven us wrong. Him, Cliff, I mean, they're they're doing it up. Brian Robinson's a beast on the ground. Terry McLaurin's finally finding a stride. I mean, dude, shout out to the commanders. They're looking good. The only thing I will say is, you know, this is 
pretty common for Cliff Kingsbury teams. And I know he's not the head coach. He's the OC. Dan Quinn's the, the head coach. But Cliff Kingsbury, he tends to get figured out at a certain point. So I really hope that doesn't happen and, and Jaden Daniels can keep uh, – you know, with his versatility, he can keep the playbook open and, and teams won't be able to figure out the commanders. But, dude, shout out Jaden Daniels. Offensive rookie of the year favorite. Highest completion percentage ever in a four-game span for a quarterback. 82% completion percentage. Beat out Tom Brady at 79%. And you mentioned the 2007 Patriots. He did it in a four-game span there. But I think it does help, too, that they're kind of doing checkdowns with Jaden. And now they're starting to open up the playbook. So it is expanding. So maybe it won't be as easy to figure out as you're kind of expanding and getting more comfortable with Jane Daniels throwing the ball downfield. I, I really like the commanders here. <laughs> the Cardinals, as much as I know Matt likes them more than I do, but I still think they're a decent team, and they just killed them at home. Yeah, well, they're I think they're, they're wiping people up on the road. It's unbelievable. Beat the Giants on the road. Beat the uh, Cardinals on the road. Beat the Bengals on the road. I mean, they're just – they're making light work. Who was their only loss at home? Uh, the Giants game, they were at home. Oh. No, the Giants were at home. No. It was the Commanders at home, I thought. Yeah, it was the Commanders at home. Giants Giants week one against the Commanders? Oh, no, that was uh, the Vikings, right? Vikings week one. Right, my bad, my bad. Yeah, because – um, yeah, that was a terrible game. <laughs> well, it is what it is. We're all in on Jaden Daniels out of nowhere through week four. Wild you two out of nowhere. Events. Wild two out of nowhere. Wild turn of events. But I'm Patriots, just... Patriots no. taking on the Niners. Did anybody even watch this game? The Patriots are what we expected them to be. They had the nice start. They had the, you know, they shocked the world a little bit, won a game. You know, they might lose out from here. Yeah. The one thing I had was Brock Purdy in the press conference kind of joked he has a faster 10 yard split than Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey. And after the fact check, he in fact does have a faster 10 yard split, 10 yard split than Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey. There was a 1.4 10 yard split and Christian McCaffrey and Debo were over 1.5 seconds. I thought that that was going to be a joke because of the fact that they're injured right now. You're talking about when they're all healthy. Yeah. When they're all healthy. That's wild. I didn't. I didn't. I find that very hard to believe. <laughs> I mean, it was in the combine. He was faster. For the, the record, time. for the record, Debo had three catches for sixty yards on five targets. So he's back. Debo's back. Uh, first, first game back. But also, what five targets? Or yeah, five targets. That's that's three catches, it. sixty yards on five targets. So any any, any rushes? Yeah, I think he had like twenty rushing yards. Okay. Yeah, I so, just wanted to know how back he was. Like, nah, they're, they're, they're easing him back to the offense. Yeah, yeah. They're easing him in there. But, yeah, not not really any reason. I wouldn't even say the Niners are back. I just think the Patriots are that bad. But uh, Browns, Raiders, Browns drop another one to Sean Watson. I mean, it's between him and Daniel Jones for the most overpaid quarterback right now. Yeah, we're going to do this again where it was with Derek Carr last year. Now it's Sean Watson. Let Jameis Winston cook. Make this team fun again. Let it, let it be fun, man. I mean, you saw it when, when they threw Joe Flacco in. Sometimes it's the backup QB magic. You're telling me Jameis Winston won't, won't light a spark in this team? Yeah. I will what say, do you have like, to lose? The, this, the, the box score could have been a little different in this one. There was a – I don't know if you guys saw the holding call uh, late in the game that brought back a Deshaun Watson to Amari Cooper – touchdown uh which obviously would have changed the the outcome of this game i they showed the replay i was at a bar watching it but and i so i couldn't hear what the announcers were saying but they showed the replay maybe five or six times after the call and every single time you're just like where's the hold like where on earth is it well if we're gonna bitch about penalty calls what was that what, daniel hey, bellinger this, i got face i got mask no, on thursday night Hey, you're talking about you're talking about a Giants player. I'm talking about the Raiders versus the Browns. Well, you brought no- up the, well, Matt brought up Daniel Jones and Deshaun Watson. So I'm I'm going to take this time to say, how are you going to call a face mask against our guy when it was a face mask against the other guy? I did see that one. That one it was, was also that that was embarrassing by those refs. It's the 10 year anniversary of the replacement refs, and now they're doing their best replacement ref impression. It's ridiculous. It's a tribute. 
Terrible. I like the tribute. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, thoughts on Browns Raiders? Are the Raiders back? No. Oh. Both and the Browns are the Browns. So it's just again, two of the bottom feeders, Devontae Adams, is about to be out for the Raiders. And how much more of a leash does Kevin Stefanski have? He, what he has a coach of the year, so he'll he'll be around for a little bit. I mean, they're they're really just. I mean, I guess the nice year last I mean, he, year the defense was lights yeah. out, but well. yeah, I think I think he put on a show last year. I think he did a phenomenal job with all the crazy shit he had to deal with last year. But uh, I mean, he the, there's he's stuck with Deshaun, dude. Like, I feel like if anything, I mean, unless it was him that wanted him there that bad, if anything, you got to look at the GM and get his ass out of there. This game being at four o'clock is ridiculous too. I know Big. Vegas is in the other time no, zone. No, dude, it's so annoying. The West Coast is like, oh, we're on the West Coast. We're going to play at four. It's like, well, yeah, the NFL could have just said F you to Vegas and for the whole A's fiasco and made them play at 10 o'clock local time. That's just never happening. That's not happening. <laughs> Ever. But Should've. we'll jump into a more fun one here. Uh, Brian, I don't know if you watched it, Jack. I don't know if you watched it. Chiefs, Chargers. Chargers had every right to win this game. Somehow the Chiefs get it done. Jack, you you briefly touched on the Chiefs potentially to be or should be 0-4. Not should be, but like not very should, yeah. to be 0-4. Um, NFL's not going to do that to their baby, their superstar, Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, no, absolutely not. I mean, the what people are like, yeah, what do these games matter? I mean, trust me, they matter. When the, when the Chiefs have – uh, the number one seed in the AFC again, and they don't deserve it. But come playoff time, they're at home in Arrowhead. It's going to matter. They're going to get the number one seed. We're going to get Taylor Swift up in the box. It's, you know, Pacheco's going to be back running like a maniac. It's 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 deja vu all over again. Yep, Taylor Swift, and uh, who knows, maybe she'll get Kamala Harris out there because she's endorsing her as our next president. Yeah. yeah, well, uh, Brittany Mahomes might be leaning the other way, so I don't know how that whole situation will work there. But I just want to point out, if Daniel Jones did to Malik Neighbors what Patrick Mahomes did to Rasheed Rice, we would still be hearing about it on Twitter four days later. I haven't heard a peep about, like, oh, Mahomes dove into his receiver's knee and he's out for the year. He, he took it upon himself to do what the judicial system couldn't, and now Rasheed Rice is going to be out all year. Like, that's terrible. And he just gets off scot free. I have no words Rice is out for the year. He's I'm definitely pissed. out for the year, but is it Mahomes' fault? He dove into his knee. I gotta see the video again because I, I don't mean, remember it being that crazy. It was the full Mahomes is diving at uh the the dude who he just threw an interception to, trying to get the ball back and you know. He hit Rasheed Rice in the knee. You're right. I mean, it was his fault, but Brian, he's just trying to play some fucking football and get the ball back. Like, yeah, relax. it's more of a football play then. Don't throw a pick. I don't think the quarterback's trying to take his best weapon out. Yeah, Brian, no one's more upset than me. I've got this dude in every single one of my <laughs> fantasy leagues. I know you, you you liked my tweet the other day about how Rasheed Rice is the only good thing that's happening to me in football this year. <laughs> uh, and then this goes and happens. So, yes, I will officially be suspending my Twitter as well. Yeah, you might, you might have to stop tweeting for a little bit. I can't say anything. Yeah. Every time I say something, some bad stuff happens in the universe. Yeah, just start just start um, saying nice things about the Mets opponents in the postseason. <laughs> Go Phillies. No. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> um, and I'm so serious. Uh, <laughs> do, we, do we think uh, – look, Chiefs are 4-0. Do we have any other undefeated teams or the Chiefs the final? The Vikings. The Vikings, yeah. Who loses first? Vikings. Honestly, probably going to be the Vikings, but Chiefs should have already lost. So, yeah, the Chiefs, obviously 4-0, Vikings 4-0. Bro, right, you got the schedules pulled up. Let's go through and see where – who's going to lose first, right? I mean, there's no way both go undefeated. Yeah, so the Vikings host the Jets in London at 9.30. So, I guess so – This really upcoming week? Yeah. Ooh, I can see like that already. That could already be – 
That's a that's a London game. That's a toss up. Yeah, and especially yeah. especially a long. It's gonna be a longer trip for the Vikings too. Yeah, yeah, and then they yeah, do it's a have... quick flight out of JFK for the Jets. Yeah, it's like four or five hours. And then uh, the Chiefs get to play the Saints at home, the reeling Saints on a Monday night. I think those are interesting games in the both in in different ways, right? Like. The Vikings are red hot. The Chiefs aren't necessarily red hot. But, again, like you said, they're playing that reeling team in the Saints. And the Jets are – we have no idea what they are. We've seen them be good and we've seen them be bad. So, I really can see both these games going either way on both sides. Yeah, the the Jets and Saints are very, in my opinion – unpredictable i mean we've seen really good out of them and we've seen really bad out of them so i if, if you're gonna make me pick one i am gonna say the vikings are gonna lose first yeah yeah i would say the jets will beat the vikings over I don't think the Saints beat the Chiefs because I think the Chiefs still have the refs on their side. I don't know that Sam Darnold and the Vikings have the refs pocket just yet. Okay, well, yeah, I, I think they're both gonna win the next week. And then you have the Vikings hosting the Lions off of a bye, and the Chiefs traveling to Santa Clara to take on the Niners after a bye. Ooh. That's another where they can both lose. Yeah, but I think uh oof. Yeah, they could both lose. Yeah, that's that's tough. Yeah, I, I got Dan Campbell going into Minnesota and handing the Vikings their first loss. And Andy Reid, I don't know the exact record on a bye, but he's insane off a of bye week, so I'm not worried about that game. I think the Chiefs might start. Their first loss will be to the Bills on November seventeenth. Because then they get the Raiders. Yeah, after that Niners game, they had the Raiders on the road, the Bucks at home, the Broncos at home, and then they traveled to the Bills. I'm actually – I'm changing my answer right here right now. I think the Chiefs are going to drop this next game. I think – I think I've seen their offense struggle enough, and now if you don't have to check out and Rashi Rice, you're going to rely on, like, 80-year-old Travis Kelsey and two-year-old Xavier Worthy. Like and- – 80-year-old Kareem Hunt, too. Oh, my gosh. I forgot. Yeah, he took over the backfield in, in this uh, Chargers game, too, after Carson Steele fumbled again. So, yeah, no, I, I don't I, – I, they're going to lose in prime time. And maybe maybe, maybe this is the, the NFL's opportunity to show everybody in prime time that the Chiefs don't have the refs in their bag, and they drop this one. And we see the refs give the Saints a couple calls that they probably shouldn't get. A little, little reverse juju on prime time. We Saints, might get it. Saints don't have hit great history with getting some calls from the refs either, though. No, they don't. Bro, that, that P.I. against the Rams is just burned into memories of Saints fans everywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the worst no call in NFL history. Yeah. I don't know that there's a worse one. Oh, yeah. um, they, they literally made past interference challengeable. After that. <laughs> After uh, how bad that was. Yeah, before we get into this last Sunday night football game, we do have some breaking news. Mason Rudolph has seemingly taken over the quarterback job for Mill Levis in Tennessee. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm watching it. I didn't know if it was because he got hurt or not, but, uh, yeah, Mason Rudolph's out there, baby. That's crazy. How's the Titans defense doing? Uh, they're six, up six, six three. Three. Two minutes left in the second. Looking better and better. Um, but yeah, it's good stuff right there. Obviously, Vikings and Chiefs, the final two teams to be undefeated in the National Football League a quarter of the way through the season here. But Bills traveled to Baltimore to take on the Ravens, and I had this as an absolute lock for the Ravens. There was no way they were starting. The Bills could afford to lose a game. The Bills could afford to lose a game. Ravens needed this one bad. Um, and they're back to 500, and all is back to being well for Lamar Jackson and uh, the Ravens flock community. Yeah, the rules about running backs aging just don't apply to Derrick Henry, I guess. 
It's absurd. 199 yards, and he had another. Like I feel like every primetime game he plays in, he has a 90 yard touchdown. It's insane. He's what Legarrette Blunt was, but on steroids. The, uh, <laughs> he's the Bo Jackson of Legarrette Blunt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Bo Jackson of the like Eric Plaza. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I think so. No, I think you're an hundred uh, percent, dude. I mean, the guy's unbelievable. It's. I mean, it might have been the last uh, last Infinity Stone in the gauntlet for these Ravens. Maybe they finally get over the hump. I don't know. I think they're still exposable. Yeah. You see, the thing is, is like. As as great as, as Derrick Henry and Lamar have been running the football, like the passing offense has been – and I guess if you're going to run the ball for 200 yards, you don't need to throw. Uh, you know, you're going to control the game and everything. But I don't know, man. I got serious concerns about their passing offense, which is, I guess, always been the concern with Lamar Jackson. But uh, outside of Zay Flowers, it doesn't seem like they have much going for them. I know likely at the big week one game, Mark Andrews is hurt. He's another goose egg there. So – uh, I, I actually maybe I gotta give some credit to Nelson Aguilar. He had a he had a pretty good game in this last one. Some some you know pretty important catches in it. So maybe he's a real receiver. Matt, what are your opinions on Nelson Aguilar? I mean, talk about a guy who's carved <laughs> out just such a nice career in the National Football League. Super Bowl champion. You know, got killed in Philadelphia for not being able to catch the ball. Next year, catches the ball, wins a Super Bowl, and just, you know, you think the guy falls off, and he's just carved out a nice, low-budget career. And I don't know how much money he's made, but he's got to be approaching uh, being a 10-year vet, or he's he's at least an 8-year vet. I mean – a guy's an NFL veteran wide receiver that's had a nice career, and you can't take that away from him. Yeah, maybe one of the best newsreel bloopers of all time. <laughs> there was that <laughs> house on fire in Philly, and they were throwing babies out. And the guy goes, they were throwing babies out. We was catching them. Unlike Aguilar. <laughs> Unlike Aguilar. Yeah, I mean, look, dude, he obviously saw that meme, and that lit a spark. And sometimes that's all you need is the meme to help you by lighting the spark. But, yeah, look, I mean, my thoughts are exactly what I just said. The guy's carved out, look, 10-year career, Super Bowl champion, NFL veteran. I mean, you know, what more can he ask for? I'd take that. He Did he, did he win the Super Bowl with you guys back in 17? Yeah. 2017, Super Bowl champ, Nelson Aguilar. Yeah, that skill player room was disgusting. Corey <laughs> Smith. Torrey Smith, Corey Clement in the backfield. <laughs> well, it was it was Alshon Jeffrey was the number one. Then you had Torrey Smith was the number two, and then Aguilar was the three, and Zach Ertz was the starting tight end. Then you had a three headed monster of Jay Ajayi, Legarrette Blount, and Corey Clement. <laughs> was this was this post Ryan Matthews? Yes, this okay. was post Ryan Matthews. Okay. It was a three headed monster. It was Laguerre Blunt, Jay Ajayi, and Corey Clement. Rookie Corey Clement, which is very important because he, caught a touchdown. Year he wasn't a, what? He got a touchdown in that game. He was unbelievable his rookie year and then he forgot how to play football. <laughs> I, that's literally how it happened. He was unbelievable, looked like steal the draft as a rookie, and then just completely forgot how to play. Well, he's got a ring at least. He's got a ring and so does the rest of that team. The offense was lights out. The defense was solid, not even though because they let Brady throw for 500 yards in that Super Bowl. But, look, it's getting late. We had a long shot not going down the Eagles' 2017 roster and how they were unbelievable because they need to do some figuring out in 2024. It's the now. Yep. Okay, we'll see. We'll Hearts. see what happens. You guys got anything else? Well, I was just going to tell the people the next time they see us, at least hopefully for me, it might be war because the Mets and the Phillies might be taking on each other in the NLDS. Saturday game one down at the bank. I really don't want to play the Mets. 
I really want to play the Phillies. <laughs> I I will address that really quickly. I must address it really quickly. I know it's the NFL show, but it needs to be addressed. I'm scared. A full week off. Yep. They don't play a real game until Saturday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, five days. They have a cupcake inner squad, squad scrimmage on Wednesday. I don't like it at all. I don't like it at all. The Phillies never play good as – as uh, I hate it. Yeah, well, it, it'll be – if the Mets can get by the Brewers, it'll be the true rest versus rust debate because the Mets will have the doubleheader they played on Monday – and then however many games that goes, and then go to the bank. Uh, uh, I got a little update for you guys on this uh, this Lions game. Lions-Seahawks, DK Metcalf fumbled the ball after like a 15-yard gain. He was trying to fight through like three guys, fumbled it, and uh, the Lions just took the ball down the field and scored with Gibbs. Oh, we forgot about know. Seattle. If they win tonight, they're 4-0. Oh, that's a good point. But they're down – 14 nothing. Yeah. Well, I guess we didn't forget about them. So <laughs> probably going to lose by 40. Yeah, they might get blown out. <laughs> and they were heavy underdogs anyway. This just seemed like a <sighs> seemed like a spot where the Lions were going to come out and and get a big win. Mm-hmm. Uh especially because, you know, nice start by Seattle, but how good are they really? I'm hoping they they're a playoff team for my sake. I think I had him as a playoff team. You definitely might have, but like I said, it's getting late. Long show as always. We'll see everybody Wednesday night for a Thursday show, Bri. Is that when we're regrouping? Yeah. Yep. Sounds good to me. That's all I got. It's a long show. Hopefully the Eagles can figure it out. Hopefully the Phillies don't collapse. Stay tuned for some Red October content and hopefully not a lot of Mets content. I'll catch you on the next one. I'm at Jack and Brian. Always along. It's news from Section 400. Love y'all. Peace. Can't believe the Mets are in. House money. Bye, Doug. <laughs>